Hi, and welcome to another Train Smart Australia webinar. And today's subject is all about starting your own business, and I'm excited. David Bunny is my name, author of Success Leaves a Trail. And first, I congratulate you for taking time out of your busy day to attend and listen to the webinar. I promise you, you'll get a lot of value from it. And I also thank Train Smart Australia for having me here. What a privilege it is to be associated with such a great company. The information that we'll be talking about today, starting your own business, is actually included in my latest book, Success Leaves a Trail. So if you don't have a copy, best you find out how to obtain one. Today we'll be talking about how to actually get started in business. Can I please urge you, let's keep it simple. <laughs> a lot of people overcomplicate this and they go, oh, I want to start a business, but I don't know how to, you know, what to do first. Please, it's not as complicated as people make out. So let's keep it simple. I also suggest that you have a pen and paper and start writing notes as we go through, although you can actually go back and, and listen to it a second time. And also at the end of the webinar, we'll have a question and answer uh, session as well. So any questions you can type in as you go. We'll also be having a look at the mindset that you need for a successful business and the fundamentals of research and marketing and we'll be speaking about some simple processes about marketing a little bit later on. Oh, did I mention that my book went bestseller on Amazon <laughs> in three major categories, management and leadership, business life, and business and money? And I'm very proud of that. But what it really means to you is that it's proof that the information is valuable. And if you apply the principles and the learning from the book, you can achieve outstanding results. If you're joining us today on this webinar for the first time, welcome. <laughs> but if you're not aware, we've also run a number of webinars previously. So I thought as a courtesy, I might recap some of the main points on some of the recent ones. We've covered system of success, where we spoke about mindset, mechanics, mentors. And that was a system that we used to achieve faster results. It started with having an open mindset. If your mind is not open for new information, ready to take on board new information, then it's very difficult to, uh, to learn the next step, which is the how-to. You see, the mechanics are simply the how-to information on achieving anything. You know, like, how do I start a business? <laughs> how do I register a business name? They're just the how-to. But as I said before, in that system, the mindset has got to be correct first. And then we also spoke about mentors and how they fast track your success. You know, the surest way to achieve anything is to connect with people who have already done it. We spoke about key success principles on another webinar. And we said, you've got to know why success is important to you. And the reason for that is, that creates your motivation and energy. You see, we get our motivation from what's important to us. And so if you're going to be successful in life, it's really a good idea to find out why that's, that's so important. We also spoke about developing good habits and routines and implementing some change in your life. And we did this by posing a question, what does success actually mean to you? And if you had more of it, how would it actually impact your life? We also encourage you to have a look at designing what the perfect lifestyle would actually be for you. Have you ever really sat down and thought about, you know, <laughs> what, is the, what is your ideal lifestyle? What would it be? Surely you wouldn't sit on a beach. Well, you might for some time, but you'd get pretty bored. But you might also get involved in your local charity or different projects. But either way, designing your lifestyle is actually achievable. I hope it would include a lot of fun. And we said, me, my passion, it's cruising. Simple as that. I love everything about cruising, from deciding what you're going to do for the day to what you're going to eat to what fun you're going to have. But what is it for you? You know, what's your passion? What would more success in your life actually mean to you? And we also, in the last webinar, we spoke about if you had more success, could you do more 
good in the world? Could you help other people? Could you get more involved in your own you know, charity or own project? And in a previous webinar, we had a look at lifestyle balance, how to get your work life in balance. The way we did that, we used the wheel of life and we broke it into eight areas. And then I got you to rate your level of satisfaction in each area. From there, we uh, designed two or three simple steps that you could take or things you could do to improve that area of your life. Because I know collectively over a period of time, might only be weeks or months, you'll eventually get your life back into balance once you identify the problem areas. So that's just a bit of a recap of some of the uh, points that we've covered in recent webinars. So if you haven't viewed them, go back and find them and have another look at them. So let's get started on the one today. So in this webinar, starting your own business, we mentioned three major topics. What does it take for a successful startup? Understanding the business mindset required and looking at some fundamentals of research. But you know what? I'd like to go a little bit further than just those three topics, because I think it's important to understand some fundamental principles and also some terminology around the business startup. Because there's a lot of misconceptions out there, and, and I, I offer a word of caution. <laughs> if you think about starting business, get the advice from the right people. Because let's face it, most people are not running their own business, and yet they're very quick to give advice. And sometimes, well, it may not, be, may not serve you correctly. Especially when they say, hey, you're going to go broke, <laughs> you're going to lose everything, <laughs> you're going to make mistakes. Well, yes, you will make mistakes. I've made a lot of them myself. In fact, I, I tell people <laughs> I've had the privilege of making more mistakes than most other people. But it is important just to separate the misconceptions to the truth. So let's move on. Well, the first misconception I'd like to address is the idea that you going to build your, your business on. Listen carefully to this statement. <laughs> I'm sorry. You do not have to have a creative brand new idea that nobody on planet Earth has ever, ever dreamed of. In fact, if you come to me for advice with an idea that nobody has ever tried ever before, I'd be worried. I'd be really worried. And look, let's be truthful. It's not to say it wouldn't work. I just know from experience, it is so much easier to improve on something that already exists. That's not hard to do. <laughs> there is a lot of ideas out there that, that, that need improving. So please, get over the fact you've got to come up with some big idea that no one has ever tried before. Don't do that. A good business is grounded on finding a solution to a need or a want. Or in fact, I'd, I'd go a little bit further with that. A solution to needs and wants that someone is willing to pay money for. <laughs> Find a solution to a problem. That's a good way to, to start. That's a good foundation. Or you might even have a look at what you're currently doing with your hobbies or your passion. Let's investigate that. Well, hopefully everybody has a hobby a passion, an interest of some sort, some way of having fun in their spare time. And if you don't have enough fun, then maybe your life's not really in balance. Fun is an important part of having a, just a balanced life. So go and have some more fun. But for the term of this webinar, we need to understand a little bit about the difference, the technical difference between a hobby and a business. Now we know a hobby is something you do in your leisure time for pleasure. But the taxation department has a definition for business and they go along the line of the systematic carrying out of activities for the sole purpose of generating a profit. That's the words that they use. But wouldn't it be really cool to build a business out of your hobby, out of something you actually enjoy doing? I think that would have to be the best solution of all. So let's have a look at some other terminology. Here's one of my favorites, knowing the difference between active and passive income. Once you get your head around this, honestly, it'll change your life. And let's set it straight. There's no right or wrong. You just need to understand the difference because if you're in business, you can actually develop both. 
So first of all, active income, what is it? Well, simply it's when you exchange time for personal exertion. You might have been in a job or a career, but it's anything usually attached to an hourly rate where you're doing something and you get paid by the hour or by the job, whatever it is, but you're exchanging your efforts for time and money. And hopefully you've got the choices to uh, do that in, 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 say, in a field that you actually love, absolutely love and you enjoy. But here's the one that really gets me excited. It's a passive income. It's when you can earn money in your sleep. And you think, oh, that's, <laughs> how do you do that? <laughs> Well, the thing is, if you're working a job that you love, and then you're also earning money passively, like while you sleep, you can use some of that money for paying bills or buying some extra toys or going on a holiday or something like extra over and above your work. But I tell the story <clears throat> many, many years ago uh, when I was just starting out in, on online and I was starting to learn how to earn some money and I had some people helping me and I was selling other people's products, and, and in fact, this particular case, I was selling advertising space, and not much was happening. Day after day, I'd wake up in the morning, I'd have a look, and no, no sales, nothing, nothing, and it went on for, oh, for some time, actually. And then one morning, I woke up, and there it was, 27 cents. Now, I know that's not a lot of money, but I tell you, I danced around the house. I absolutely... I, I did the money dance and I was so excited that I had earned 27 cents while I was sleeping. My family thought I'd gone nuts. <laughs> the kids just looked at me and thought, come on, what are you talking about? 27 cents? But it was a principle. I had earned money while I was sleeping and that was it. I was hooked. I understood the power of passive income from that day forward. And when you go on to develop a business, you might say, well, gee, I'm in a service business. How can I sell products? Well, you sell other people's products. Very easy. Uh, or you could sell digital products. You don't have to have your own products to sell online. The good thing about that is that some of the uh, products like ClickBank, that's one place where you can go and find uh, digital products of other people's to sell or share a sale, their physical products or what they call drop shipping. Uh, you've certainly seen eBay, but these are all opportunities that you could match with your business idea that you're currently driving forward. If you wanted to do some more study on it, have a look at uh, f affiliate marketing is what it's actually called. But understand the difference between active and passive. Understand that between the two, it'll give you choices to how you can spend your time uh, actively doing your personal exertion or your job. It is powerful and just get excited. Just get excited because passive income to me is just so powerful. So that's a, a great learning outcome there. Do some more homework on it. Remember back in high school, you learned about Maslow's triangle and security was at the base of everything? <laughs> well, this, is, this subject here is all about security. And first of all, I need to make a disclaimer. I am not a financial advisor. I am not allowed to offer specific advice about money. <laughs> but you know what? This is one subject I know a lot about. And your financial security comes from three areas. The first one is simply yourself. As we said before, the best investment in the world is in developing yourself through your studies, through gaining extra knowledge, through gaining professional skills, they belong to you. They're like intellectual property, they belong to you. Nobody can take them away from you. This is why it's so valuable to further your studies wherever you can. They belong to you. Now the second area is not quite as secure. Uh, particularly, you've seen recently in the mining industry through job losses. You know, I know some very highly skilled engineers uh, who were living out here from America, they were flown back. The company downsized and they lost their job. Even some careers have to be changed occasionally. So a job or a career or even a poor attempt of a business is not that secure. But the third area here does, it covers for all of that. 
multiple streams of income. Now, I don't mean go and get a part-time job or, or two part-time jobs. What we're talking about here is that you'll always have your primary job or maybe your primary business that you're developing. But there's no reason why you can't go and develop, if you're in a job, perhaps a part-time business. Which is really good because businesses take a while to fully develop. And so you could have your job through the day, hopefully it's one that you enjoy doing, and earning money through a part-time business on the side. Now what if you added on top of that some passive income and perhaps you developed a website selling other people's digital products? Or you're making money out of your hobby on the weekends? Or perhaps you're even saving money for an investment property or something like that. But as you go through and develop several streams of income, and it doesn't matter how small they are, goodness, if you, can you imagine just earning $100 extra a month through selling, I don't know, some books or something online of other people's? What would you do with an extra 100 bucks a month? <laughs> it might be a dinner out, or save up for 12 months, and it might be a you know, weekend away or something. But I know one thing is that if you can develop several streams of income in your life, and not just rely on your job or your career or just your business, it creates your lifestyle financial security. And it's really, really powerful. <laughs> it has, it, when, it, when your other sources of income develop high enough, they will give you the choices on how you're going to spend your active time, what job or what career or how you spend your personal exertion. So let's move on and find out which path you can choose and what are some of your options that are available to you. Which path to choose? Hmm, I'm sure you've asked that question to yourself more than once in your life. But guess what? It's a trick question. It's not one or the other. You can have both. You see, the mindset of developing a business is simply knowing what it is you're trying to achieve. It's just like your job or your study or you're developing a career. Once you know what it is you're trying to achieve, you then can work backwards. And really, it just comes down to sensible time management. You can balance the two. So very often, it's not a matter of choosing, well, gee, am I going to uh, follow this career path and get a job there and happily you know, move down that direction? Or no, I might go down this way and, and develop a business. You can have them both. It's just a matter of time management. Now also understand, <laughs> some people might be working in a job right now and how they feel at the end of the day. And I can relate to that. We get tired and you just want to sit down and just stop and relax. Well, the way to get over that is to create more motivation, more energy. And as I said before, your motivation comes from what's important to you. So if improving your lifestyle and having more fun and balance, if that becomes important to you, then think about that at the end of the day when you do feel tired. And that's where you spark up and, and get a bit of energy. So once you set your goals, it's a matter of working backwards. I always like to, in business, I set a, an exit strategy. Uh, in study, I, I think everybody who, who develops a study plan should have an end date. When do they expect to finish their study? and then work backwards. How much time can you devote? And set up a systematic small blocks of study time. Well, developing a business is exactly the same. When do you want to get it off the ground? When do you want to get started on it? We can do the starting anytime. The research, uh, developing a business plan, and you might only dedicate maybe an hour a day. But collectively, it all adds up. So it's a matter of not choosing which path, it's a matter of working backwards and deciding what's important to you. So that's, you know, don't let fear stand in the way of making decisions. Just know what your goals are, set that plan, and please keep it simple. Don't overcomplicate this stuff. <laughs> I know a lot of people have a tendency to think, I, I, I don't know how to you know, do these things. If you're unsure how to set a study plan, ask somebody. If you're unsure how to develop a business plan, the knowledge is out there. The how-to information is out there. Ask. Just be certain on what it is that you're trying to achieve. If it's a better lifestyle or balance, know your goals and then work backwards. Then as you're developing it, ask this simple question several times a day. Is what you're doing right now 
congruent with the direction that you want to go. Now, I ask myself that all day, every day. Is this the best use of my time? Is this helping me achieve what I'm trying to achieve and heading the direction I want to go? And if you keep asking yourself that question through the day, it keeps you on track and that aligns with the plans and you'll achieve it. So now we're going to move on to exactly some of the how-to information, how to find opportunities and take it from there. Are you still taking notes? That's my question to you. Because now we're moving on to some of the how-to information, how to find opportunities in the first place. Well, as I said earlier, if you can make money out of your interest or your passion, that's always got to be a lot more fun, a lot more enjoyable. And I mentioned right at the beginning of this webinar, chances are, no matter what passion or hobby you're doing, somebody else out there in the world is making money from that exact same field. So your starting point and finding opportunities, simply go and research that industry or research how those other people are currently making money out of what you enjoy doing yourself. You know, you might look at who are their customers, how are they delivering a benefit or a solution, or how they're actually solving uh, problems. But go and research how other people are making money out of your interest or passions. Now the second area is to do what they call a strengths and weakness of your own skills. <laughs> I, I laugh at this because I run this very, very often and on the left hand side the strengths column is like really, really long and on the right hand side, well, what are my weaknesses? And that ends up to be very short. Look, if you're not honest with yourself, work with a colleague or a friend or, or someone who knows you as well as yourself. Uh, but find out what your strengths and weaknesses are. Look at some of your skills um, professional skills or, or even some of your studies. What are you really good at? Because it's nicer if you can match some of those skills with the business opportunity or at least the direction that you're heading. You know, for example, um, if you enjoy working outdoors and you enjoy talking to people, well maybe if you developed a business along those lines where it's people orientated or in sales and it's outdoors, it might be a better match for just you know your, your, your personality and you'd have a lot more fun. <laughs> I smiled recently, I did a mentor session with a mature gentleman, it was so funny, well I, I laugh now, but he was developing a business and it was in retail and we went through the business plan and I said to him halfway through, I said, you do realize you'll have to talk to customers <laughs> It was such an obvious question. He was shocked. He said, what do you mean? I said, you've got to actually talk to customers. He said, I hate people. I don't like talking to people. They annoy me. <laughs> I said, well, the direction you're heading in retail, it's all about customer service. Oh, no. And so anyway, we worked around. He said, well, we'll have to hire some really, really good friendly staff to overcome that. But he hadn't considered some of his matching his strengths and weaknesses in that case with the direction that he was heading. So when you're looking for opportunities, keep that in mind. Now you can look for opportunities just straight on online, Google, do a research, what businesses are available out there in the particular industry. You can look at newspapers or maybe even brokers. Um, you can just generally look for what's out there. But the other way I find uh, a little bit more entrepreneurial is listen more carefully to some of the problems that people complain about. <laughs> and that's not hard to, hard to do because people like to complain about their problems all the time. But when they are, that is a ready-made business for you. When people constantly have a problem, you can come up with a solution. Now, I don't mean you personally have to come up with a solution, but there might be a solution out there to some of the challenges that people are having. And you can either, there might be a product or a service, and you could tailor that directly to a common problem that's out there. Great opportunity uh, for developing. And of course, the third area there is asking within network. Make it known within your social network that you are looking for money opportunities or business opportunities. Ask around some of your peers. Do they know of anything? Uh, or go and talk to some business owners already and ask them how they actually got started. But asking uh, within your network is usually produces uh, some very good results. 
OK, so let's learn some more. One of the exciting privileges I enjoy the most is personally working with people starting business. And I get to mentor them through the beginning stages over a period of time. And I've been blessed to work with couples and single mums and retirees and entrepreneurs, all sorts of people, and they're fantastic. I get so much out of it myself. I really love mentoring startup business. And so what you're looking at here on the, on the screen is 100 of my stories of people I've worked with. And I guess if I told the story behind each one, it would be a very, very long time. This would be a long webinar. But if ever you wanted hope or evidence that anyone with a willingness to learn how to start a business, you're looking at it on screen there now. Those hundred stories are evidence that anyone can get into business if they're willing to learn and put the effort into it. And some of them are really incredible. There was one in there, a film director. He was brilliant at what he did. He is so skilled. He started off as a photographer and then he started developing short films and he was so good at what he did. The only thing he lacked was business skills. He didn't have a clue how to develop or monetize uh, the talent that this man had. And now, of course, he's gone on to be quite a famous um, film director. But it, all he needed was some guidance and some knowledge on just simple business skills. You know, 3D printing and manufacturing. Uh, there's a couple of guys there, highly skilled entrepreneurs. They were, they were so on the cutting edge of technology. I, I, I didn't even understand half the things they were talking about. But again, they were fairly young, they were entrepreneurial, no business skills, and that scared them. And I said, well, hang on, we can go through one step at a time. Let's do a business plan, let's work on how you're going. And the system was exactly the same. The key element there was they had a willingness to learn as well. I guess um, <laughs> some of the more funny stories, <laughs> I haven't met very many aviation test pilots in my, in my life, I've met one. <laughs> and this guy said, look, I wanna retire. <laughs> I didn't ask why. He was a pilot. How skilled is that? Anyway, he developed a flight simulator business here in Perth. Go talk to him. He's a heck of a nice man. Um, yeah, wonderful. But aviation, a pilot, ex-pilot. Um, I worked with a single mum with three beautiful daughters. All she wanted was enough money to pay the rent. We helped her build a, an eBay uh, business. We specialised in one particular area, but she was a single mum. And, you know, just with a willingness to say, okay, let's do this, <laughs> I need to do this. Uh, who else have I worked for? A microbiologist. Now he was a very, very intelligent, he'd been studying half his life, but then found difficult to find work in that particular industry. And yet he knew all about the system of ripening vegetables. <laughs> which I knew nothing about, but I was able to help him develop a business out of that. The principles were the same. Uh, what else have we got in there? Can you imagine just loving uh, windsurfing and then going becoming a windsurfing instructor and a surfing instructor? How cool is that? You know, making money out of, out of surfing all day? Or the yoga teacher, again, single mum, uh, she specialised, she did a yoga class, and developed a business out of um, not only exercise but for children. And so you can see like there's a hundred examples with a commonality running all the way through of just wanting to learn how to do a business and just taking the small steps of doing a good business plan, identifying the market and developing it. Some of these people were changing professions, some were doing it parallel with their studies, some were running parallel with their job, some were unemployed. There was, you know, the one common element there was a willingness to learn. So if ever you wanted hope or evidence that you could do it yourself, no matter what industry or what passion or hobby you're in, there's a hundred examples right there. So let's, uh, <clears throat> let's see what's coming next. Do you want some more evidence that anyone can build a business? <laughs> Go and research an LIP, a LIP. I'd never heard of these people. 
I had to go on Google and find out exactly what they were. Location Independent Professionals. It's a whole industry. In fact, online, there's a whole community. But these are people that have developed businesses, mostly online, where they can take that concept or that business and operate it from anywhere in the world. <laughs> a beach in Mexico or, a, or an office apartment in New York or, or here in Australia. It didn't matter where they were. Now also understand, it's not for everyone, sure. Not everyone wants to travel around the world and, and, and work in different locations, but some people do. And here's evidence that people are actually supporting a lifestyle of their choice just through developing things online. Now, why do I get excited about online opportunities? Well, for many, many reasons. The first one is it's low cost. <laughs> I always like the words free and low cost in any business startup. But it is easier to get something going online. It's very measurable, no matter what you do, whether it be marketing or advertising, or the numbers are very measurable when you're developing something online, good and bad, but at least it's measurable. And if you can measure it, well, then you can manage it. Online opportunities can be passive or they can be active. You can earn passive income, as I said before, earning money while you sleep, and yes, I can't explain how it feels in the morning when you check your bank account and you've got more money sitting there than you did when you went to sleep at the night before. That is just a good feeling. Or you could choose to run it actively as some of these uh, professionals do. It's 24 seven and you have a global marketplace. So if you wanted more evidence, I say go and Google the lifestyle of location independent professionals or even hook up to some of their communities. There, there are a lot of them out there and just pure interest, see how they created a lifestyle of their choice through developing business online. So moving on, how do you evaluate a business idea? When you think you know the direction you want to head, how do you evaluate your idea? How do you know that it's a good one or a good fit for you? Well, let's find out. Okay, another disclaimer is required here. <laughs> you are not going to base your entire financial future on a simple checklist like this, right? Please, that's my disclaimer. But this is a list that I use with a lot of people, and I know it's simplistic questions, but it might get you thinking about, you know, is, it, is the idea or the direction you're heading really a good fit with, your, with what you're trying to achieve or with your skills and your personality? So I run through about 12 questions, and let's hope you get at least 10 out of 12. <laughs> it sometimes can be an indication. As I said, don't base your whole financial future because you know you, you can go and learn the skills you need. But the first question I ask, does the idea solve a problem or deliver a benefit? Because a lot of businesses are, are fundamentally based on exactly that, solving problems or, or you know, delivering benefits. Are you passionate about the idea? Yes or no? Because as I said, the passion creates your energy and your motivation. So it's very important to be at least a little bit excited about what you're going to do. Are others successfully doing something very similar? Now we mentioned that earlier about you know, having this brand new idea that nobody on planet Earth has ever thought of. You know, it is nicer if you can find something that other people are currently successfully doing because then you can maybe make a different variation of it or even do it better yourself. Can you create a competitive edge or an advantage? You know, can you do something a little bit different? Can you be competitive? Does it have a high likelihood of success? Now that's a very simplistic question, but just common sense will tell you whether the, you can look at something and do you think that's really gonna work? <laughs> you know, just give that some thought. Does it help me achieve my goals and purpose? Now that's a very important question because as I said, if you're not congruent in your direction, you're not going to hit your goals. So if you develop a business that's not in the same direction and not gonna help you achieve the lifestyle of your choice or, or whatever your goals were, then it's the wrong type of business perhaps, or you need to modify it. The next question, is there an obvious market for this idea? 
Very often people come up with ideas. <laughs> it's usually around a barbecue, a few drinks or something. Oh, this is a fantastic idea. And they don't actually give some thought. Does anyone actually want the, <laughs> want the product or service? Is there an existing market? Are my skills and personality well suited? Simple question, simple answer. Now again, you can change some of your skills. You can be upskilled with you with things or change a little bit about your personality perhaps, but it'd be nice a fit if you were close in the first place. Here's an important question. Are there mentors in this industry that can help me? As I said, a mentor will help you fast track your progress. Please don't be afraid to ask for help. Do I have access to sufficient funds for this idea? Well, the reality is yes, it takes money to develop a business. But it's a little bit false because there's a lot of things you can do with the correct knowledge of free and low cost methods of achieving things. So whilst you do need funds and you do need to have a look at how much you will require, sometimes there's ways around you know, not having to have as much as you personally needed or thought you needed anyway. Is the upside potential worth the effort involved? Now, I mentioned this in my book about decision making. It's a, a bit of a, a contrast between how much effort is required and how much reward is likely. So when you're considering a business, is the upside potential worth the effort? It's a worthwhile question and answer. And can I see where the money will be generated from? Again, it's just trying to identify your market. Is there a market for it in the first place? Can, is it easy to see where the money would be generated in your idea that you're thinking? So that's some of the, uh, it's, I know it's a very simple checklist, but if you sat down and thought about it, it would be a good foundation for at least evaluating an idea. So once you've evaluated your business idea or your concept or the direction you, you think you, you want to head, then the next step is to research. And I put up there, don't forget to research. Look, sadly, I've seen so many people rush in and attempt to develop a business without the fundamental research that's required. If you don't know some of this information, it's really, really difficult to build a business that's going to succeed without the foundations. It's like trying to build a house without getting the foundations correct. And this is where the research really helps you. Now, the most common system that's mentioned in most textbooks are called the four C's or the quick test. The four C's of market research, customers, consumer behavior, costs, and competition. And you research your customers, who exactly are they? Where are they? Or how much might they be willing to pay for your product or service? Your consumer behavior, well, that looks at what are their needs? What are some of their buying motives? Why should they do business with you? And some of their behavior, are they repeat customers or once off? Costs, well, that can cover a broad range. It come from your business plan, it can look at some of your fixed and variable costs, or right down to some of your operating costs. Are you gonna make a profit? <laughs> That's why you're in business. Make a profit to create a lifestyle. You know, where's the money gonna come from? So you research that, you research how other people are doing it. And the last part is competition. Who exactly is your competition? Where are they geographically? Are there trends in the marketplace? One great uh, opportunity is to have a look at international uh, businesses in the same field. You know, very often there's trends happening internationally that aren't yet here in, in the local market. And so there could be opposition, um, great opportunities there, uh, looking at some of your competition and what they're doing internationally. So that's some of the four C's of market research. And you really need to spend a fair bit of time on that because the more information you gather, the easier it will be to develop a business plan based on that information. And of course, then we can go into marketing, which well, is a subject all of its own. We'll talk some more about that in the next slide. Marketing made easy. <laughs> this one diagram gets me into more discussions with people than anything else ever. And I feel as if I've almost got to apologize for explaining the marketing system in such simple terms. 
And I've had some really spirited debates with some academics. So I know people study marketing for years. And please, I, I don't take away from that. That's very, very important study. But I challenge with all the learning, doesn't most of it come down to just these four areas? And I've challenged a lot of people. So let's go through them and explain them in layman's terms, simplistically. If you're running a business, the first thing you need to know is exactly what it is you're selling. Now, I know that sounds a simple question, but it goes a little bit deeper than that. <clears throat> what are you selling? You might have products and services. Yes, I'm selling uh, products and services, you know, beauty cream or, or, or makeup. No, you're not. <laughs> you might actually be selling an experience or a feeling. So sometimes you need to clearly identify what is it that you're selling. It might go a little bit deeper than you first appear. Now the second part of the marketing or marketing strategy is who exactly are your customers? Now I know in marketing you can go into primary and secondary markets and you can break it down demographically and you can go down even further. And But at the end of the day, it's simply who's your market? Who's, going, who's your target market? Who are they? <laughs> That's it. Don't overcomplicate it. And the third area is, what are their buying motives? Why should I do business with you? Why do they buy your products or your services? What solution are you providing? So it's the why of your business. And I know that can also run deeper, but simplistically, why should they do business with you? And the last part of my explanation is how are you going to deliver your message, your advertising message, to your target market? You know, you might do it online, offline, print advertising, strat it doesn't matter, but it all comes down to how, how to deliver your message. And so when I explain marketing in these four areas, people just get it. <laughs> they understand it. And I know it's very simplistic and, well, now I don't apologize for it because I know that through marketing and learning more about it, you can learn a lot about the strategies. You can go a lot deeper. But the reality is if ever you're bogged down into business or not developing as quickly, I use this to come back to identifying where the problem is. And a lot of people might be suffering on sales or it's just not developing. It will be somewhere in what are you selling, who you're selling it to, why are they buying? How are you delivering your message? It'll be one of those four areas. So please take on board a snapshot of, of that diagram. It is priceless when it's implemented correctly. In my book, Success Leaves a Trail, on page 109, I talk about overcoming indecision of getting started. Three frogs were sitting on a log one decided to jump off. So how many were left? Three. <laughs> Why? Because making a decision is not quite the same as taking action. You can become highly motivated and energized, but until you actually do something, you're not moving in the direction of achieving your goals. And so when people say, when should I get started? <laughs> the answer is now. Get started now. If you're going to develop a business, you can start with whatever you're currently doing, do it now. But find your reason. Step one, find why you want to start a business and make that reason strong enough or powerful enough to give you the energy and the motivation you need to move on. Once you've got over that, then just simply go and get the information you need. I've shared a lot today in this webinar on the how-to information, but there's a lot more you can learn. Keep it simple. Learn the information. And of course, the last action step, don't be afraid to ask for help. Most people enjoy helping other people. You just need to ask for it. So don't delay. Don't keep putting it off saying, gee, one day I might get around to doing this. Stop. Set your goals. Be specific. Get started now. I travel the world promoting the value of mentorship. And I always love to share this particular quote. A single conversation across the table with a wise man is worth a month's study of books. <laughs> I love that quote. Because 
I personally understand the value of a mentor. I have worked with so many through my life and I'm so grateful and appreciative of how much they have helped me develop and progress so far that I just continually promote the fact that mentors fast track your progress. It's as simple as that. And I'm currently still working with several mentors, probably because I need help in several different areas. But the reality is they work, they help, and they fast track everything. So please show gratefulness, appreciation, and reach out and connect with mentors that can help you move forward quicker. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this webinar as much as I've enjoyed sharing the information. I've had lots of fun here today. And also, I hope you've taken lots of notes. <clears throat> if not, then go back and re-listen to it a second or third time. So let's recap some of the learning outcomes. The first thing is knowing why you're considering business in the first place. Getting some clear picture there and having clarity of your goals and your objectives. What it is you're trying to achieve. Can you imagine what your lifestyle would be like by design if you had to you know to perfectly design it considering matching your skills and interest with your opportunity make sure they are a good fit and if they're not maybe you need to upskill some areas researching other successes in a similar field we spoke about not reinventing the wheel have a look at how other people are making money out of your hobbies or passion and using that as a foundation for some of your research but remember don't forget the research because that is your foundation that you're going to build and develop your business on. And on timing, now. <laughs> Get started now. But I do also encourage you to continue your current activities. It doesn't have to be a choice between developing a business or study or work. You can do them all together. Just improve your time management. I have clarity. So run things parallel for a while and maybe then you might have some choices on you know, maybe doing more of one than the other. And the important thing there is connect with mentors willing to help you. We said they fast track your progress. They help you. Be appreciative and acknowledge the fact that they are the key to making things move forward quicker for you. And overall, keep it simple. <laughs> you can't believe the number of people that I haven't started a business because it seems so complicated. I don't know just what to get started on. How to, you know what, just keep it simple. Just go through step one, step two, step three, and before long, you're moving very quickly. So keep it simple, recap some of the learning outcomes, go back on your notes, and we'll move on from here. I live a very simple life. My life revolves around having fun and helping other people. That's it. <laughs> so please, if you want to connect with me, Come to the website, davidbunny.com. There's a lot of resources there about success and a few articles. Or if you want to find out more about the book, successleavesatrail.com. It's got all the information on there. It's not great to receive gifts. Well, you know what? I enjoy giving gifts. So as a special thank you bonus for tuning in today and listening to this webinar, I'm offering my free online course called Get Your Life Sorted, then make money. <laughs> the title says it all. That's the content. That's exactly what it's all about. So if you want to head over to davidbunny.com, you can sign up for there. It's free of charge. Thank you. Well, unfortunately, we've run out of time on this particular webinar, but I trust you've been taking lots of notes so you can go and learn some more about those points. I thank TrainSmart Australia so much for this opportunity to share and I've had so much fun hosting this webinar. In fact, I'm proud to be associated with such a company of high values. Like myself, their sole purpose is to help other people achieve their goals. So in closing, I hope I have inspired, educated and encouraged you to achieve your success. So now, I'd like to welcome any questions that you may have had during the webinar.